The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And about every day. So what do we have? A fairly light volume day. We're down seven, maybe eight points on the S&P cash. But is there any juice? We didn't have any on the way up. But guess what? We don't have any on the way down. Just 3.4 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Let me update that just to make sure it's right. Yep, it's right. 3.4 billion shares so um, if you wanted volume off the top, you didn't get it. If you wanted volume at the top, you didn't get it. And generally, that means that we're probably settling into some kind of doldrums. And uh, eh, you got to be ready when the wind comes. But uh, unfortunately, it always takes a bit of time. Uh, options, as we showed yesterday, did I bring that up? I think maybe I... I'll go ahead and show this. Uh, there it is. Let's go ahead and... Okay, that's Thursday. There's the S&Ps. Okay. Um, options market makers continue to kind of try to move up um, what they think are the, the expiration range. Uh, this one's kind of a little bit uh, over-exaggerated. Uh, but basically, you've got about maybe $150 million difference um, from where we're at now uh, to where uh, the absolute worst case is on the SPY options. Um, they pretty much uh, moved from about 220 to 247 yesterday. And what generally happens is these will just track in as you go higher. But um, you want first to add about uh, 20 to 40 points to the S&P cash. So two to four points on the S&P uh, or on the SPIs themselves. So that kind of gets you up, uh, you know, if you're talking 25 on the uh, SPIs, uh, then you're talking or two, 250 on the SPIs, you're talking 254, 255. And that's because of the short positions that kind of offset it. Um, so... <sighs> You know, we're just kind of hanging up here. There isn't a lot of volume. Could we kind of move down a little bit? Could we go up a little bit? We could. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like playing a hand of cards where two of a kind beats, uh, you know, ace high and three of a kind beats two of a kind, even if they're aces. And so when you're, you're looking at what moves stuff in the market, the first thing that you generally want to go to is you don't want to be short a quiet market. They have said that since uh, I think uh, I read somewhere that the, they were saying that in 1910. Um, so it's nothing new. That is that uh, markets that uh, right now are moving, you know, a quarter of a percent or, you know, an eighth of a percent. What are we? Uh, yeah, we're a quarter percent on the S&P cash today. Um, that's pretty much flat, uh, statistically meaningless. And uh, you go back to, you don't want to be short a quiet market. Now, maybe you get lucky. Uh, maybe the war starts or something like that if you're short. But until you make a fairly decent signal, I found it better to be hands off than hands on. As they uh, like to say, Larry says in the morning, rather be... Uh, out wishing you were in than in wishing you were out. Um, and that's kind of the difference between speculation, intelligent speculation, and gambling. And uh, it took me a while to understand that. In fact, that's one of the passages I love best out of reminiscence of a stock operator from uh, uh, Edwin Lefebvre, which was really Jesse Livermore. Uh, 
uh, a, a nom de plume, as they like to say. But uh, he said what the hardest part was figuring out what the difference between gamula, uh, gambling and speculation. And gam in gambling, you just put your money down and hope that everything works out. In intelligent speculation, uh, you use at least some idea of having an edge in the market. And that edge is probably asymmetric, i.e., uh, if you're wrong, you're going to lose one dollar. If you're right, you win three or five or ten. Uh, the idea is to always know that you can lose a little, and sometimes you make a lot. Uh, anyway, uh, for $150 million, are you going to move 50 or $100 billion worth of stocks? You're probably not. Um, but, you know, a year ago, um, it was 500 million. And you could see the difference from 500 million to maybe 100 million as they move the market around. Now, you know, if they're lucky, they get 100 million. Or in this case, the worst case is 150 million uh, off of where we're at now. If they ran it down, they're just not going to be that much money. They aren't putting that much money at risk anymore in the options because they are getting killed. But it does tell us uh, basically where they think that there is no lower price to be had. And right now, that's uh, right around 250 on the spies. So if you were expecting uh, 200 points down in the next week, option market makers are pretty much betting that you're wrong on that. They do tend to be the best traders uh, on all of Wall Street in any kind of endeavor, whether it's commodities or anything else. Um, kind of the uh, the guys that set the odds in, in uh, Las Vegas – for the football games, those guys are the best that they can find, and they make a lot of money. Uh, but uh, eh, as we look at a very light volume market, uh, like I said, I'm not going to get too excited about making a decision about being long or short. My guess is by the end of the day, we probably go end up being flat on the S&Ps. Uh, Dow's just down 25 at the moment. NASDAQ's down 41. Uh, could have been a lot worse after the Ivago uh, earnings call last night, but I don't think that they are representative of that market. And there is some news that I think you want to hang on for uh, with me and Tom O'Brien at 3.30. It's going to tell you maybe something a little different than people aren't talking about just yet, but we'll be talking about next week in the space that Avago is in. Uh, other things of note, that's probably it. Um, we might have a week of nothing but going sideways. To me, uh, going sideways uh, somewhere around 2,900 on the S&P cash is a great consolidation to go to try to take out the highs. I didn't say take out the highs. But when you hang around uh, at highs and they're going sideways, the longer they go sideways, the more than likely that those highs are going to be broken. That doesn't mean it won't be a false breakout, but it will be broken. We'll be back after this. So we'll do a little history and some other stuff. There's the music. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. We'll do history in just a minute. We've got John from Philadelphia on the blower. How are you doing today, John? Hey, David. Uh, David, I am doing very well. Uh, clearly not making any money trading the, uh, the S&P futures this week, given, uh, given it as quiet as it is, but uh, doing well nonetheless. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, discuss further with you the uh, action of the S&P, uh, the SPY ETF and the futures, uh, and uh, ask you a question. Uh, first, thank you for uh, sharing the signals you're getting from the options market. Um, but anyway, just uh, by way of history, I've done a little look and see, going back to 2012, each and every year in June. Since that time, and of course this would be the ninth year, starting with and including 2012, uh, uh, the month of June was a quiet month in each one of those years. Sometimes there were some lower lows in June than the preceding May, such as uh, has been the case here this year with that low down at that 2730 level on June 3rd, the Monday, and then, then reversal up. But in uh, each and every year since, uh, June was um, either flat to higher and July was either flat to higher as well. So we're running eight uh, consecutive years with that type of pattern. Uh, this is the ninth year, and of course only time will tell if that pattern repeats, namely a qua or, uh, flat to higher June and likewise flat to higher July. Uh, so, but I wanted to share that with you. So we've got a, a string going here. Uh, going into the ninth year, and now looking at the behavior that you showed with the options market, uh, I found it striking, and you pointed uh, this uh, on your discussion 10 minutes ago, but I found it highly striking that the options market makers, the options sellers, were not pinpointing a tight price range 
for uh, the S&P to close on options expiry, which, of course, is Friday the 21st. Can you share with us your speculation as to what has changed in the market character and the behavior of those market makers and option sellers and their willingness to commit capital? Because for months and months, quarters and quarters, that group of market participants had regularly uh, put their capital to work pinpoint or in effect pinpointing a, uh, a fairly tight target range for an S&P uh, to close at upon the quad, uh, quad witch. Such is, not, uh, such is not the case today. So their behavior has changed. I'm wondering if you would share with us what you think has changed for them, that group. I think that a combination of high-frequency trading and news-driven trading, um, I, I think that there were a lot of fundamentalists in years past, but if you're always moving the cheese, uh, the rats don't know where to go. And if you've got something, uh, uh, the economy, which is not so much driven on fundamentals and how much people are buying, the thought of how much they're going to buy next month, if a, a trade deal does or doesn't go through, if this law or that law doesn't get passed. And I, I think what's truly happened is that they've decided to go risk off. Um, a year ago, there was about uh, $450 uh, million dollars, uh, that on either, on either side of the options curve. Now we're down around... Uh, 1.5 billion, or you know, excuse me, 150 million. So, you know, for what they, the worst case scenario for options holders would be, you know, 245 or so on the spies. That would be the, the most amount of people would lose. Now, I, I think in past, um, a lot of people were using options uh, to hedge their positions. And now it looks like a lot more people are using uh, a more active uh, approach using futures. So I think part of the movement uh, is that you can trade futures 24 hours a day, pretty much, uh, but options you can't. And I think uh, a big change from last year to this year is that it's so news driven that no one wants to have anything like options, which are far cheaper than the futures, if you're wrong. Um, to uh, to be in. So I, I think we've got a fundamental shift uh, out of computers constantly hedging 24-7 now instead of options that in years past, you know, we'll just hedge our position with some options and that'll be it. I think that right. that, that may be pushed by option market makers uh, who uh, also are not selling as many options as they used to because, again, headline risk means that they can't get out in the middle of the night, right? Very and they've good. got thanks, that risk for... throughout expiration. So right, I think sharing... that – go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I was uh, saying two things. Thank you for sharing that uh, line of thinking. And uh, in parting, just wanted to ask – if there's anything that's on your radar screen at all that would suggest the next seven, eight weeks, in other words, the remainder of June into July, would happen to be different than the preceding eight consecutive years in which the month of June was flat to higher and, and quiet. That's uh, everything and I see is the same. basically what you said until uh, both fund buying and uh, the uh, G20 meeting when uh, I guess the president and uh, Chinese communist president meet somewhere around the 29th. And I think I'm getting the kind of feeling that everybody's kind of decided that the like their positions, either in or out, and that's it. We're just going to wait and see what happens at that meeting. So we may be in the doldrums. Uh, and of course, 
with a lot of individual stocks being highly short and light volume, uh, we can see a lot of action. I think maybe some of that it, it, we're seeing in some of these IPOs that are running away. It's that kind of happens at euphoric markets uh, and euphoric markets with no volume. That is that everybody's looking to make a dime, so they go gambling on the new IPOs or the Tilrays or the other stuff. But uh, just uh, the IPOs of the last week or so or two uh, that have run to the moon uh, kind of make you think that that's another good sign of uh, them not being able to make money in the regular markets. David, thanks so much. You bet. We'll talk a little bit uh, more when we come back. Jim Sinclair had a theory, and we'll bring that up when we come back after some history at the bottom of the hour. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1822, Charles Babbage unveils his design for a machine he called the Difference Engine, the first example of a mechanical computing machine. The British government funded the building of the Difference Engine, but it was never completed, which uh, Babbage actually never completed, too. Uh, however, uh, Babbage's design for the Difference Engine is later analytical engine spurred uh, future designs of working mechanical 
computers. 1991, a working difference engine was constructed using Babbage's plans that proved his designs would have worked. And um, I think I saw it, I want to say in, 19, in 2002 or 2005, I went into a museum and saw the completed one. Uh, quite a work of art because uh, basically back then you didn't have a lot of great machines. So you had a lot of clockmakers that uh, and watchmakers that knew how to make fine gears, but everything was handmade. And uh, but uh, when we think about computing, we think about today. But you know they had the ability to make it; they just didn't have the desire or drive to finish it. I'm thinking he got sick. I can't remember the story, but uh, yeah, they had computers. And of course, uh, that computer they fell, uh, found off the uh, coast of Greece that isn't much different than this, that, that uh, calculated where the stars would be. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's like, uh, begins with an A, but it was a, a quite a complex computer. Um, and from time to time, I guess we do kind of lose our way for technology. And uh, I think that one was, a couple hundred years or maybe 500 B.C. Uh, and made all out of brass. And they brought it up and figured it all out. But uh, yeah, mechanical computers been around for a long time. Okay. Um, could you focus on market participants? This is going to be like Y2K where we get to uh, the end of the month and nothing happens. And my answer to that is no. I think we've got a binary outcome of whether or not they shake hands or they spit at each other. Because I don't think that there's a lot of room in between. Um, the president of China uh, can't look weak. Because if he does, uh, there are a lot of people that want to. I mean, any communist country, there's always people wanting to put uh, 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 that are uh, taking care of your back want to put a knife in it. And a lot of times they're more worried about that than any kind of success. One of the reasons why uh, communism does not work and never has in all of the 6,000 years of recorded history, and yes, they're communists back 6,000 years ago. Uh, but um, you know what? It's uh, There's just not a lot to actually hang your hat on, but I do think it will be a pivotal moment in this year's trading. So I, I just don't see a lot of middle ground where they kind of shake hands and kind of agree. Uh, I think we're either getting tariffs or uh, we're going to get some kind of agreement to go forward. And of course, right now, uh, it's tough to get news out of China because if you actually reported the truth, you probably get thrown in jail. Here we can't report the truth because they don't want to. There they can't because uh, they'll get thrown in jail. Here they're lauded for their fake news. But uh, what can we do um, other than that? I think that's it. But everything that I see, even the, the options in the next month, uh, signal that everybody thinks that we're going to hover here for a while. And, you know, consolidation, kind of good, uh, does help. Uh, another question, and we'll get on to some other stuff, and that is uh, what I th think about uh, Larry Ellison of Oracle um, and his uh, competition. Um, he was very much uh, like Ted Turner. Um, Ted Turner liked to, uh, especially before about 1990, uh, loved to race his America Cup shot and would uh, notoriously hang off the uh, back of it drunk as a skunk, uh, mooning. Uh, flipping people off, uh, berating them uh, drunk on the back of the America's Cup uh, as he soundly beat them. Um, they used to call him the mouth of the South. Uh, without the alcohol or profanities, Ellison is kind of the same thing. He liked to taunt uh, his competitors in the marketplace. He thought that that set them uh, off balance. And uh, part of what he did was a complete uh, discipline of uh, the art of war from Shen Tzu. What is that about? Uh, I think like 1000 BC or something or 2000 BC forever and a uh, time ago. Uh, he actually lives in a kind of a replica house and grounds of a, uh, a kind of a uh, fru uh, feudal 
Japanese warlord kind of thing, but um, very big into the uh, art of war and the sayings and uh, understanding of how to uh, compete and uh, pretty much responsible for the whole art of war. Um, I don't know if you call it phenomena, but certainly in business, uh, people studying it went a long way. But uh, yeah, he was always interested in distracting you while he was going on and doing something else. But um, he wanted to win at all costs. Uh, but uh, I think that's about it. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Uh, oh, go back and check in with the markets. Already in progress over most of TFNN, if I can actually find them. There we go. Okay, so we're off four and a half. Like I said, I, I suspect that we're just playing around here. And, you know, could we break out on better news? We could. But I'm just suspecting that 2900 comes next Friday. And if you're going to make any money, it's going to be in individual stocks. Um, got a first question of the day from my email is about GLD and it rolling over here today. Uh, to what's a and if I have any thoughts about it, and I mean you're up here at these highs and you got no volume. Uh, this is the second retest of the 15.6 million share high that was at 127.21 on February 20th. You got into it on the seventh of this month with 8.2 million shares. Today you spiked it yet again and closing below it on 8.5 or 7.5 million shares so far. So you might have just slightly more volume. Uh, energy is just a little, it's not horrible from this, but it, everything continues to say that for the most part, we're probably in a trading range in gold. And the longer this goes on, uh, the bigger the bounce is going to be when it does break out. But uh, yeah, I mean, you didn't have the volume this morning. You don't have the volume now. Uh, now, could some something come in? I think a lot of people were buying gold on the idea that, that would be a war in uh, the uh, Mediterranean, but uh, that seems to be kind of losing a little bit of steam also. My guess is if you're looking for war, you look for the new moon, and that's going to be, I think, the 2nd of July because uh, our stealth fighters, not invisible. So they have to go on cloud cover or a moonless night. So uh, I think we've got a little bit of time before that comes back at us. Anyway, half the volume at the high. No mas. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We're back. Uh, just to looking at the biotechs, see if there's anything going on in there. And the answer is, I think, uh, you know, it, when we talk about lower highs and higher lows, we've been in a giant triangle in the IBB since uh, this October 1st, 2018th high. I mean, you went down all the way to December 24th of last fall. You pop back up into March 4th. Now you're back down in here, but going up against some fairly decent support, which is uh, right around 98. You've bounced off that. Now you're kind of going sideways. Um, this thing probably consolidates out. Uh, I've been thinking for a while that if there is a sector that looks uh, like it's underperformed over the last few years, it certainly was the IBB. And normally after a couple of years of underperforming, they outperform back again. And uh, yeah, I think the theory, or not the theory, but the theme of the rest of the year is going to be sector rotation. Um, there's a lot going on in tech, and most of it is bad. Uh, most of it's self-inflicted. Uh, I don't know how much we're going to talk about it with Tom and at uh, 3.30. Uh, but most of the big fang stocks uh, have decided that they've got a real problem and instead of face it, they're just going to ignore it and go uh, blindly forward. But I just can't imagine that it's going to be profitable for them long term. But uh, man, we'll talk a little bit more about that at 3.30. Uh, what else do we have happening um, uh, we want to look at. Uh, got a quick question about Microsoft. Is that telling us anything? Um, one of the things that a company's not doing, uh, that Microsoft's not doing that everybody else is, is getting uh, knee deep in ethical or even political issues. Microsoft's been able to stay extremely far away from it. Uh, where Google employees have said that they will not work uh, for the United States government. and Anything that the government does is evil. We don't want anything to do with it, uh, even after winning contracts and giving those folks a job. That's great. They can go work somewhere else, I guess. Uh, but more than willing to work for the Chinese and other nefarious evil. You've got to look at Google and Facebook and the, the culture around those as uh, toxic. Um, Pinterest, if you're not familiar uh, this week, uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, eh, I'm going to say Hitler youth uh, is the uh, kindest way to talk about them. Uh, labeling Bible verses as pornography because they don't like Christians. You know, you get that kind of stuff going on and around and in your company and it, it's just toxic for the price. 
Microsoft has avoided that. I think a great deal is because they're not in Silicon Valley. I think that there's an echo chamber there that is extremely non-productive. Uh, they're not worried so much about what new product they have. They all have monopolies. Uh, and they're more important with virtue signaling and trying to act more important for the people next to them. In fact, it's devolved into something that is bad as high school cliques, uh, where you have the jocks and the, and the uh, other people that run around. And of course, uh, everybody is just as horrible as they can be at 17 and 18. Uh, they don't know much about their life. And that's what it's become. Silicon Valley has become the high school of people that really don't think a whole lot and act poorly uh, when it comes to ethics. De-evolution, that's about it. Okay, um, I'll get off my soapbox on that one, but it's, uh, it's just sad and sick to see uh, what those folks have done. And uh, as a old saying is, absolute power can, uh, can corrupts absolutely. And that is kind of what we've got. And a rejection of all reality, um, which is kind of interesting to me. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon, even though taking some flack this year, uh, AMZN, also not in Silicon Valley, has been able to avoid a lot of the same thing, and that is getting uh, involved in uh, basically Silicon Valley politics to exclude government contracts and other folks that would actually want to give them money. Um, so Amazon's been able to pick those jobs up. Uh, also, uh, Microsoft has been able to pick those jobs up. And again, we're not in the right or wrong business, we're in the higher or lower business. And of course, that means that uh, if you're turning down $10 billion contracts with the government, uh, where you know those checks are gonna come, uh, that's a lot of tough business to turn away at the door because uh, eh, all your programmers uh, eh, kind of hate the United States or the government or anything else. Um, but Amazon continues to hang around 1900. All of these guys, probably except Microsoft, have antitrust issues. Microsoft has done a very good job. My guess is in five years, Microsoft will have antitrust uh, issues just like the rest. Uh, they just have uh, kind of uh, come up in the last few years where a lot of these guys have been fighting uh, for new and higher profits and uh, were able to uh, have an economy maybe with some of those ethics. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody in the den saying what we all know once we get old. I was so smart at 19, it was when I got older that I got dumber. Yeah, everybody thinks they know it all. And uh, uh, as my dad used to say, uh, <laughs> you'll understand taxes after your first paycheck. <laughs> so there's something about that. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Amazon, take a, a, a quick look at Netflix. Um, again, I, I was looking at options fairly hard last night. I didn't see a lot. Um, the, you know, you're down on fairly light volume going back into the June 3rd low on Netflix. That had almost 8 million shares. Uh, today, you got 4 million shares. So unless we get a ton of volume or some news out here, there's just not much going on, and it's quiet. And again, I'm going to say that there are, the old chestnuts around the stock market are there generally for a reason, and that reason is they probably mean something. And that is, do not be short a quiet market. Wait for the activity. Wait for the blow off top. Uh, if you miss it, you miss it. But again, you'd rather be uh, out of the market wishing you were in than in the market wishing you were out. Uh, two, 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 what else do we have? Okay, you gap down on semiconductors, but again, no volume out here. Like I said, so far, this consolidation does not look bad. Um, this you, you've had your automatic rally in the semiconductors without a lot of preparation and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that when we come back but, you know you're back into a candle yeah, or in candles yeah, but eh, not that much difference and you got 
put 4.4 million shares back into a 7 million share low uh, back on the 4th. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I uh, had a question about to when do we buy Intel? And I have to say, I... I have no desire of either buying it or shorting it until the current CEO is gone. And the uh, question is, well, what price do we buy? And I just, there's absolutely no reason that I would want to buy this uh, again. Uh, the history of tech companies and innovation uh, where the CFO became the CEO is poor. Your odds are poor. And until they get rid of that guy and get in somebody that's a little bit more Jim Kirk and Dr. Spock is uh, eh, what I'm waiting for. Uh, they've got a lot of great products, and maybe they continue to move and even get a little bit going. But um, I just don't think, uh, when we're talking about competitors, um, they look at it as a spreadsheet. I think that there's some kind of desire in a poker player that you don't get in an accountant, and uh, that's what you need leading a uh, a big corporation is a poker player uh, not the cfo who's really got to be grounded in truth and reality <laughs> hopefully um and that's it uh anything else it's just been a quiet week 
I don't know what else you can say. Uh, at least you've had a lot of noise in the market from the news, but you just haven't had a lot. Oh, uh, what was I talking about with uh, Jim Sinclair? Jim Sinclair uh, came on Tom's show uh, a while back and said that the best thing for gold was markets that are going sideways. And maybe that's why we've had kind of a nice little pop this week. But again, very light volume in this uh, push higher uh, compared to even just uh, the high on the 7th. Sell when you can, not when you have to. And again, we'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Catch me with Tom O'Brien at 3.30 when we talk technology.